um, habitually breathing in more, habitually taking in more than letting go. Now, this is the interesting thing. So, I was always habitually more of an out-breather than an in-breather. So, I'm easily, I'm, I, I forgive easily. I don't cling on to things. I'm, I let go of things, people, relationships. I set up home many, many times in my life. I don't have any problem about being anywhere, being with different people. But the downside of being a predominant outbreather is I would avoid how I was really feeling. So rather than, if you think about it, if you breathe all the way down into your belly, you've got to feel what's going on down there. And that's the, especially for women, the seat of our depth of feeling, but it's also our depth of wisdom. So the or I, I avoided feeling how I was feeling, the more wisdom, internal wisdom, I was actually missing out on because our feelings indicate something to us that needs to be healed. That, you know, they're intuit, it's, it's guidance, especially women, that depth feeling is our guidance. So if you have a look at yourself, you can probably start to recognize some of the traits. Do I really easily, but I have more trouble um, uh, feeling life fully. So, women even weight. Women, I've known women who have been overweight simply to balance their breath and they've lost weight. I've known women who are underweight to simply balance their in-breath and they've gained weight because it's all about receiving. When you breathe in, you're breathing in life force, prana as we call it in yoga. So, breathe in full energy, full life, but unless you let go of it on the out-breath, there's no space to breathe in the next moment. Same with wealth. And women often have trouble receiving. Mm. So do you think it's as simple as practicing this breathing exercise consciously? And can you tell me for how long before you see results? (laughs) For some people who are thinking, hey, if only if I breathe properly... Oh, my bank account will look a lot healthier. For the, for all the people who are thinking she's a case that possibly can't be true, I, you know what's amazing? I can tell you, okay, so I had, let me think, all right, there is, here's a couple of examples. One was a mentor client of mine, not for relationship, but for wealth. And she was permanently fight or flight, shallow breather all the time. And she was in survival mode financially, emotionally, energetically. In every way, she was in survival mode. And so I said to her, "It was she, she's in London. I said, take the summer holidays off. She's a little girl. She's a single parent. She said, well, to be honest with you, you know, I'm on the pension. I'm not earning any money anyway. So it's not going to make any difference. And I said, what if you just spent your summer holidays breathing fully and relaxing? And you know what? Digestive problems disappeared. She started by by the end of that period of time. Her health and well-being was profound, profoundly different. Um, she started to get clarity on how she wanted to create money. And since then, she's now um, earning herself a living, doing what she loves. Um, mentally, she's really tapped out. She she's, has much more bandwidth. So that was a period of time because her habit was so strong with the chest breathing. But I have another woman who was very frustrated 